what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm sick and tired of you guys behaving like fucking idiots. It's done. It's over with. I don't know how many times I have to yell at you. I don't know how many times I have to swear at you to get my point across. I'm sick of this shit. This video is going to change your goddamn fucking life because you've all been acting like little shelf bitches. If you don't know what a shelf bitch is, I'm going to define that for you. And I'm going to tell you guys how to avoid being one of those losers that literally just gets fucked up all the time. And you sit there and wonder why people use and abuse you, why you're sad, why you're never the one, why you're always on the end of the roster, why he's ghosting you, why she's ghosting you, why they message you seven months from now randomly after they've literally dropped you. I'm going to help you. Because you won't fucking help yourself. Welcome back to E Rotic the brand. Hi, I am your host and favorite dating coach, I hope. My name is Eden Lee Middleman. You know the saying, he's gonna put you on a shelf and pick you back up whenever he pleases. You know that analogy? Well, I took that analogy and I've coined a term. A shelf girl or shelf boy is somebody that will always be around. And the person who is treating you as such knows that. That's why you're in their life. So if you're the girl he calls from time to time, if he'll talk to you for months and then drop you and then contact you months later, you are a shelf girl. You are allowing a person to come back and disrespect you and they know that and they know that there are no strings attached and they can do as they please and they can lead you on because you are so easy to convince with sweet words and little baby bare minimum actions and you're always going to be there. Once he's done running through Stacy, Casey, Macy, and Johnny, Kenny, and Jeremy, then he or she is going to come back to you because they're bored and they know that you'll always be there. They want somebody that's like similar to a boyfriend, girlfriend without the responsibility of having a boyfriend, girlfriend, somebody that's going to be there regardless of how he or she treats you. And that is what being a shelf girl or boy is. You are put on the shelf when they find something else that's more interesting, another toy that's more fun and shiny and new. And then once they're bored of that, they come back up and they're like, oh, my good old, you know, Johnny, Barbie doll, Ken, whatever, and take you off the shelf and use you as a distraction for their own issues and to fuck and entertainment and whatever because they're bored and because they're insecure and they have problems. What they do is not right. However, you sitting there on your ass in your room fucking crying about it is also not right. You putting yourself in that position, allowing yourself to answer the phone, allowing yourself to message him or her again and again, even after they've proven themselves to you, regardless of their excuses, you are the problem, not them. You are allowing them to make you a shelf girl or boy. And then you wonder why they go off one day and date somebody after they told you specifically that, hey, I don't want to date anybody. I'm not interested in a relationship. I'm going there's not much right now. The fucking bullshit excuses, okay? They could never look at you as somebody they date because you allow disrespect. Because you allow this behavior. Because you're okay with him coming and going, with her coming and going. Don't look at me and say, I'm not okay with it. I'm hurt. I'm upset. We had conversations. He told me this. He told me that. Stop listening to what people tell you and start looking at what they do. It's that simple. That's the difference between fact and theory. Theory is something that is being contemplated and suggested in a scientific fact is a point that's been proven. The scientific fact here, the, the point that has been proven is that this person does not take you seriously due to their inconsistency. Inconsistency means they're not consistent about their feelings towards you. Somebody who is not consistent will most likely never be consistent with you in this dynamic. Once you become a shelf girl or boy, you cannot become anything else to that person. And you don't want to. Because in the back of their mind, you've already solidified in their brain, their subconscious, that you are that person deep down inside, even if you wake up and you start changing your actions after this video. Every person that's made you a shelf girl or boy, you have to throw into the dumpster. You are done. It's garbage day. It's garbage day. We're throwing everybody out today. Okay? Today is your deadline. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't text. Don't stalk. Delete, block, mute. You do anything and everything that you need to do so that you are not distracted, that your healing process going forward from today on to the next few months is not hindered by a fucking loser who is only doing this to manipulate you, to hurt you, to bother you, to disrespect you because they benefit from it. Not you. You don't benefit from it. You get instant gratification in the moment. But then how do you feel afterwards? There's always a problem. You're always arguing. There's always a fight. There's always drama. Your friends are sick and tired of your fucking bullshit because you have not put an end to it. The universe works this way. If you do not put an end to things, it will keep coming around. That's karma. That's the way the world works. That's why the world is a circle. You'll keep coming back if you allow it. 
My second question to you is why are you in that position? Why do you not like yourself? Why do you believe that this is all that you can get? This is all that you're good for. This then, this train of thought will lead you back to a very deep, dark, painful place of trauma, of self-esteem issues, of self-respect problems, of whatever. And that is what you need to work on. Be less focused on your shelf position, hand in your resignation, go back to square one and focus on yourself. Because if you don't, you will keep falling into this. And that's what you've been doing. Am I right? I know I'm right. You don't need to show the right person who you are and how good of a person you are and what they're missing out on. You don't need to prove that to them. You do not need to make them obsessed. You do not need to, you know, win them over or show them or revenge or you don't need to do none of that. The more time, the more energy, the more thought you put into a fucking person who is useless in your life, the worse it is for you and the trajectory of your dating life, the trajectory of your life in general, and any sort of form of progress that you want to make in terms of healing, dealing, and leveling the fuck up. Stop wasting your time. It's done. No if, no ands, and no buts. Move the fuck on. Shut the fuck up. You're done. Now act like it until you really are done. So, you know, I've dealt with this with my friends and family. But I need to get an answer. But I want to speak. But why? But like, I just want to message him. But I just want to. For what? For what? For what? You know why you want to message him or her? Because you want them to fill your ears and your mind up with bullshit because they'll do that because they've done that. And you'll get a hit of what you need in that moment. Bullshit. You need bullshit to calm you down until they act offside again. Until they show you that what they said really meant nothing. There is nothing to converse with this person about. You guys are nothing. You don't owe each other anything, regardless of how much time has gone by. Unfortunately, you don't because you put yourself in that position. So be upset with yourself for a second, then move on and forgive yourself and act right for yourself. You'll only be able to move on, forgive yourself and whatever if you start changing. Otherwise, you're going to look at yourself and be like, I'm a piece of shit. Well, yeah, currently you're a piece of shit, but you can change that. You can change that. Do you want to? How badly do you want to? We have to rewire our brains because we've already told ourselves that this is the best way to figure out our problems, to fix things in the moment. We get that attention, the love that we crave, that we feel like we can't give ourselves, that we don't get from anybody else. Stop looking for that in others. You're giving up your power and you are relying on somebody to give you something that you think that you absolutely need. And yes, you do need love and affection and care and all that stuff from your goddamn self. And the reason why you end up like this is because you cannot give that to yourself because you have not trained yourself to give it to yourself. You don't know how to give it to yourself. You are scared. You don't like yourself. You can't look at yourself in the mirror for real. And this is going to be a huge self-discovery journey. This is going to fucking take you a hot minute, my friend. I'm not going to lie to you. Envision who you want to be, how strong you want to be. And then every time you have to think or make a decision or you feel some type of way, ask, would that version of me behave like this? What would that version of me do in this moment? It would not be the text, your fucking piece of shit, fling ting situation. It wouldn't. We don't talk to people that don't respect us. We don't waste our time on people that don't respect us. We cut because we don't believe that there is a lack of good people out there for us. Now, I know a lot of you guys want tangible tips. The first thing is cut ties. There should be no way of this person communicating with you or finding you. There should be absolutely no way. Delete, block, mute. It doesn't mean that you're angry. It doesn't show him anything. Don't listen to any of your stupid friends. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay, they don't. This is you respecting yourself and be like, you know, for me, I'm going to do this. I don't care what people think. I don't care if he thinks I'm mad. I don't care if he, who gives a fuck? Who give? do I give a fuck about him? Does he give a fuck about me? So why would I give a fuck about him? Then I want you to write every time you have a negative feeling, every time you have an itch to contact him. Why? What am I going to get out of it? Will I actually get what I want out of it? What do I really need from myself right now? Why am I searching for that in somebody else? I want you to ask yourself these questions. Write them down. Talk it out to yourself in the mirror. Make a voice memo. If your friend came up to you and with this problem, what would you say to them? Watch this video over and over again until it registers, until you don't have that urge or itch anymore. The urge or itch is, is a devil in your head that's being like fall into your old ways because it's comfortable. Just do it. Just do it. Hoping that the outcome is different every single time when it never is. You are being more whimsical listening to that side of you than changing, than going into the unknown. Because you already know what the outcome is. You don't want to believe it, though. If somebody tells you that there is such thing as gravity, look, 
you know, my lipstick will fall when I hold it up in the air. And you're like, well, I bet if you do that one more time, it'll float. That's what it is when you go and try and contact somebody that made you a shelf girl or a boy expecting shit to change, expecting their excuses to hold any sort of validity. You sound like a fucking idiot. You look like a fucking idiot. It's absurd. When you've seen things fall, right, time and time again, you know there is gravity. What makes you think that if you drop a ball, it's suddenly going to stop in midair? I promise you that if you choose to act differently in this situation and do actually something that is good for you, your life will change drastically. You will no longer be the girl that people just drop whenever with no explanation. You will no longer be the guy that girls speak to for a few months and then dip. You will no longer be at the bottom of the roster. You will no longer even be considered in the roster because you're too good for a goddamn roster. You are not competing. You are above that. You are beyond that. You are better than that. Just by changing your actions will the entire state of your fucking mental change. The way people view you. The way you feel. Because when you put action into something that you want, you're full-blown changing your goddamn fucking chemistry. You're believing in yourself. You're becoming something. You're becoming a new person. You're changing your life. And I know this sounds like extremely big from what we're talking about, but it's true. Because I guarantee you, if you behave like a shelf girl or boy, you're behaving like a shelf girl or boy in other areas of your life. That's your attitude with a lot of things. I'll accept it. I'll take it. It's fine. Whatever. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. If you're not going to do the work, do not expect change, period. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do hope it helped. I love you guys and I am sending you all of my positive energy and love and warmth and strength and also my annoying voice yelling in your head. I hope that it implanted and I hope that every time you have that urge, I'm fucking yelling at you in your fucking head. Watch this video, save it, share it, send it to a friend that's going through this. Give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me and it means the world to me. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell for the notification so you don't miss another really important video. Make sure you rate the podcast five large and in charge stars. I know this was a quicker and shorter one, but I like to mix those in from time to time. I know you guys are busy and I just want to thank you for listening and for spending your time here with me. I will see you guys back here very soon. Bye-bye.